So, I thought it would be fun if I designed a uh, four-legged robot dog that I could 3D print. It had uh, some basic movements to it, so it would be animated. But my main goal was not to spend more than $40, $50 at the absolute top. So I was going to kind of limit the uh, functionality of the of the toy. And then I was thinking back, you know, like the Boston Dynamics Spot dog robot. And before that they had their big dog. The one thing that I always found the most uh, entertaining about them is when they would be standing in one place prancing. And normally it would be, let's say, if this leg bent up, lifted up, and the rear one lifted up, then they both would come down, then this one and this one would lift up, and they'd alternate and go back and forth, and it would just sit there and prance, but not go anywhere. And generally you'd see it do that between moves, like if it was standing still, everything would just be still. But let's say it had been walking, then it would stop, it would prance, then maybe it would turn or tilt or something. So in between moves it would just continue to prance, and I always found that quite amusing to look at. So I thought maybe it'd be fun to make a prancing robot. I've done plenty of walking robots and four-legged robots and servo programmed robots and balancing robots, both mechanical and servo. So in this case I thought, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and make this a programmable servo robot that can prance and is animated in as many ways as I can for, again, that $50 would be the absolute maximum um, price range. And so in order to keep into that price range, that means I'm going to be using the inexpensive analog uh, 9G servos. I think I've got one back here. Let me grab a bag here. And... Yeah, here's one in a bag. Here's the way they come. That is a, just your standard little 9G servo. And you can find these uh, even on Amazon. You can get like 10 of these for $18. So they're about a dollar. $1.80 each, which is pretty cheap. It's amazing, actually. But um, one of the problems with them, of course, is they have limited speed and limited power. The limited strength of the servo is is one of the biggest problems with this, because uh, to run the servo, I'm going to be using four AA batteries, 6 volts. But there's a lot of weight, and I figured the batteries are going to sit back here. And the servos probably won't have enough oomph to, uh, for example, move into a squat position and then stand back up. They just won't be able to lift all of that battery weight, possibly. Um, I have shortened the legs to try to keep the, because uh, the further you move out from the servo shaft, you know, the more power it's going to take to lift and lower things. Uh, to do a proper walking dog, you know, like the spot Boston Dynamics dog, up here in the shoulder or the hip, depending how you want to look at the legs, you actually need to have not only rotational forward and backward movement, but you also have to be able to gimbal in and out and rotate like this. You basically, uh, to do a proper leg, you would need four servos just for the one leg so you can control not only this movement this way and this movement but also I just said tipping forward and backward and up and down if you can get all those functions in there then you can be as uh, agile as you want assuming that the servos that you're using have the power the strength and the speed so I have none of those things my little project is much uh, simpler I just wanted something to add to my shelf that I designed that was dirt cheap, so I showed you the 9G servos I'm planning on using, just four of them, one in each one of the hips. Then for an added benefit, I'm going to put a servo up here to move this whole uh, upper turret left and right, and then this uh, claw piece can raise and lower. So I can just add some more effect to it. And to control all the servos, I'm going to be using the uh, Pololu Mini Maestro 6. It's a very small little circuit board that can control up to six servos and you uh, program it and it'll just repeat the program. So that was the plan and uh, that falls within the budget because again I'll have uh, six servos at about a dollar eighty each and um, 
The Polo Lou, unfortunately, has gone up in price. I can remember back when I could buy them for $15. Now $25 is more than norm. Some places want $30 for them, but I found one for $25, so ordered that. So you've got uh, your six servos, the Polo Lou, a battery case holder for the batteries, you know, a buck fifty, two bucks, something like that. A switch. Um, I'll have one power uh, boost. I'll call it a power regulator. It's the same little regulator that I've used all along, but basically the Polo Lou needs a clean 5 volt supply uh, to keep running. The servos can just run off the 6 volt battery pack and they don't particularly care if, they, if the batteries um, under load, let's say if you're firing all four at once, you're going to suck that battery voltage down. So there could be a substantial drop in battery voltage. Well, that would totally freak out the Polo Loop. So it needs a clean source. So you have to throw a voltage regulator in. So even if the battery voltage were to drop down to two volts, I still want to see a clean five volts running the uh, Polo Loop. So to get into this, where I basically start is I started with the upper body and leaving things that are details and cosmetic parts out of the picture for now. Um, let's see, I've got a file here I believe I can open. Servo frame 4, yes. So here's the basic frame and then these notches will allow me to take a servo and actually just slide it in from the bottom all the way up. It's notched and it's spaced so that the two servos will butt up together so I can push one in there and push one in there. Here's a cable trough row to run the got to get back into the move mode get the cables out. This hole will allow me to put a screw in to lock the servo once it's pushed all the way in there up into place so it can't go anywhere. Uh, here's where I'm tentatively thinking of putting the on off switch and this hole is to allow for uh, uh, a micro USB cable to plug into the Polo Loo so it can program it. You can see the inside. I've got the two mounting points for the Polo Loo because that's where it's going to sit. And then this whole space is provided for the uh, four AA batteries. Same thing is going to go on in the back. Shove two servos in there, screw them in place. And this, uh, I'll consider this grilled area the front. Again, though, when it's all put together, there'll be a separate detailed panel pieces on each side. There will be a detailed grill piece that goes in there. Okay, let's take a look at the... Hmm. What do we have here? Well, this is a leg linkage. That's going to run from the... I don't know if I can really show you that way. Let's work our way up to that maybe, huh? Here's a ball foot part. So you can see it's pre-built at an angle. One of the ends of that leg linch piece I just show you is going to drop in there. I'm actually just going to take a nail and cut it short into a pin. So once I put the linkage in, I can poke that in and pin it. And I'm going to do the same thing. This center part is going to go into an upper leg part. Here is an upper leg. It's going to slide up in there get pinned that leg linkage part you just saw will be on the inside that leg linking pin on the upper part where it attaches to the body will be visible through this opening here and um, the reason there's an opening on both sides is that way I can use this one design as both left and right so I don't have to uh, make a separate file for the left or the right legs. I can use this one for either one. Now there'll be the screw that goes in here that screws into the end of the servo and the uh, end of the actual servo drive shaft will uh, press into this hole and the screw will come in and lock the two together so that as the servo moves this piece can can then move. What haven't we looked at? We've looked at the upper leg, we've looked at the ball foot, and we've looked at the leg linkage, we've looked at the main body frame, and the projected image. So what would happen in this case is um, if this leg were to move further back, then this part of the leg should lift up. As this goes back, that should come up. As this comes forward, that should come down. 
So if it was straightforward, if both parts were straight in line, then that would be in contact with the ground. So again, that's not ideal for walking, but that is ideal for prancing. And uh, the prancing, like I said before, was the part that I really enjoyed about the earlier ones and what effects they could do. So what I'm hoping is I'll be able to do is not only by manipulating the legs, prance in place, I'm going to start by maybe just lifting one leg quickly and putting it down before the robot falls, then the next, up and down before it falls, and then the next and the next. And if that works, then we'll move up into other movements. If the servos have enough power, it could be interesting to move the legs back so the back end is squatted down and straight the front up so the robot is like in a begging position. Or reverse it so it's like if it's hunting and looking down towards the ground or something. Um, it's all going to depend upon whether the little Mind G servos at a dollar eight each have enough power to be able to recover once it's squatted down because it's uh, quite a bit of leverage to put out on the end of an analog 9G servo. Now I could go to the digital ones and they're a lot stronger. They also pull a whole lot more current so at that point I'd probably move up to a lithium battery pack or something. But um, they, they're they real expensive. The price goes way up and at that point I'm not really interested in the project anymore. So this, uh, this is going to keep it fun and keep it cheap. The amount of plastic used will be neg you know, very little. I'll just be using scraps of whatever I've gotten laying around, and if I have to paint them, I'll paint them. But as you can see, there'll be detail parts added to the sides, the detail grill part that'll print separately, the detail part that uh, will glue onto the legs to hide where the screws were and where the keep the pins from coming out. But uh, that is an overview of my uh, my version of the SpotBot as a little toy being able to prance in place yet be programmable and again it's like saying in the forty maybe fifty dollar range maximum and I'm going to proceed with this and we'll find out what those little 9G servos can actually do and what they can't do for the price I mean it's just amazing that you can get a servo for a dollar eighty in the first place but <laughs> let's just find out what they can or can't do in this particular application